everyone. Today I thought I would do a little flip through of this um, colouring book that I got for Christmas. Um, my sister gave me this one and uh, it is from the Royal Horticultural Society, a floral colouring book. I haven't, I had a very quick look through it, um, not at every page, but uh, I thought I would save it and share it with you. So that's fun. So inside the cover look we have some pretty floral designs. And here is our, um, and here is the same picture, I think. Yeah, it's the same picture, but it's uncolored, so you can have a go at coloring that one. It does go right into the spine, but I'm sure that's uh, manageable. And here we have a few more designs, quite similar around the edge. So I can't get the whole book in shot, but uh, let me, I'm just fiddling with my light. I think that's probably the best. Um, position for it. So here is our introduction and it says the floor illustrations in this book are from the world famous RHS Lindley Library which brings together a vast range of historical gardening illustrations of rare and unusual cultivated cultivars. Sorry. Each illustration has inspired a black and white floral pattern for you to colour. Use pencils, pastels, pe pens or paints to create colour and texture to these pages. Take inspiration from the vibrant colours in the floral images or let your imagination run riot and dream up colours of your own design. So we have some florals around here and here as well to uh, colour. So let's look at the first proper page. So how the book is designed is we have a very pretty picture here. And at the bottom, in small writing, it does tell us the source. It says, I won't read every one, but I'll just read this one. So it says, Peonia Peregrina, in signed band coloured engraving from HGL Reichenbach et al. Icones Flore Germanae et Hevetica, volume 4 1840 so it's from some sort of book tells us the name of it and um, what it is so that's beautiful isn't it so on this side you see we have a different picture it's not it's not that we have to copy this one you can see we have a sort of repeating pattern so we can use this picture to inspire this side so maybe copy the color or try and copy it completely or just take some inspiration from it so that's interesting so this is the same through so here we have one here this says it's unnamed and but it's an anemone and here are similar ones to have a go at now what I like about this one is the three-dimensional look to it you know we've got to appear into the center so so replicating that in coloring could be really interesting and fun so uh, that's that one and this one is a passion flower it's actually the one that's on the front cover I think and we have a sort of repeating pattern here so we can do something similar and there are buds um, which are also heal it. So that one's rather pretty. And this one is interesting because we've got a bit that isn't coloured in. But these are just white um, flowers, um, which is interesting um, because trying to do white isn't easy, but it may be doing a background and then letting the white show through could be the way for that one. Okay. Oh, these are fuchsias. Um, it says Fuchsia Cochinea, so it tells you this sort of Latin name. Now, I'm not very good on plants, but I obviously um, recognise that as a Fuchsia, and that's because my mum grows them. And we have quite a pretty um, pattern here. It's obviously not um, natural. It's, it's more of a just a, a fantastical picture. So that's quite fun, but we've still got the same basic shapes as the flowers here that we can copy. Now this one, look, is a very pretty um, peony, I think. And look at that sort of bud starting to burst open. And we have very similar here. Of course, if you find white difficult, like I do, then you could always do it pink or something else. I mean, could, or it might just be a good exercise in trying to get to grips with using white. Either way, quite fun. Now this one is a type of violet, a dog's tooth violet. How strange. I can't imagine any dog's tooth looking like that. But there we go. Maybe it's to do with the shape of the 
petal, I'm not sure. So we have these here. It looks quite like an iris with those stamens. I don't know. I'm not big. I'm not big on flowers, but. And here we have another pretty one. This is, I don't know, Rosa Fatilda bicolor. So it's very pretty. It is a rose actually. Looking at it, it's quite like a dog rose. And we've got a, a repeating rose pattern here. So I have to keep moving it back and forth. I've tried to write, raise my um, tripod quite a lot and it's getting temperamental. So these um, are pretty. I don't know what these are. Um, and we've got a pattern here. So of course you could copy those colours and but maybe also use other shades of purples and pinks or blues in there. That's really pretty. These are anemones. And we and they've got a pretty ribbon on it, but we don't have the ribbon in our picture. We just have a repeating pattern of anemones. What's quite fun is, although it's a sort of repeating pattern, it isn't too similar. So you've got lots of different things to do. And this one is a tulip. And we have the tulips here. It's interesting because I always um, associate tulips with being in tight buds. This is an open tulip. And look, the bulb is there as well. But here we've got the, all the open blooms, which is fun. It means you get to colour the um, stamens in the centre, which is something we tend not to do with tulips. Now that looks like a type of rose. Uh, Stuartia malatodendron. It's not a rose then, but that's quite, again, it's a white bloom. It's quite interesting that although it's white on white paper, it still shows up so that's quite interesting that could be something to play with and have a go at although that paper isn't as white as this so I'm not sure it might be slightly creamy oh these are the um, fri fritillaria there um, Johanna's drawn a few of those in her picture it's not actually in this one this one is just this which looks like a sort of uh, that's a snowdrop. This is a scarlet martigan, and that's oh, it has the snowdrops and those, but it doesn't have the fritalia, which is my husband's favourite flower. And what have we got here? Oh, sweet peas! But look at the colour. I don't think I've ever seen a sweet pea that colour, but this is fun because not only have we got the flowers, have we got the flowers? A few here. Oh, out of shot. Um, down there, look. and a few bits here. But we've got all the pods on the sweet peas, which is fascinating. And this one is a lily, but they're orange colour, very pretty. And the spots are in here, but not on here, so you could put them in or leave them out. Here's a lily. And this is a type of rose, I think. It says Vinia rosia. Oh, white Madagascar periwinkle. Mm. And we have lots to have a go at. Of course, you could... I, I probably wouldn't do those white. I'd probably just play with something else. So that is a Jerusalem lily. And we've got lots here to do. There's quite a clutter of leaves and flowers and petals there. I think I'd have to really work out what was what before I started, because it's quite a mix. This one is a clematis or clematis. People pronounce them in different ways. I don't think there's a right and a wrong as far as I'm aware. So uh, there are different types. I've never seen one like that. But we've got one in our garden. Well, it's growing through from next door. So we've sort of stolen it. It's very pretty. And um, the people who planted it have moved out. So I sort of adopted it. But it doesn't take any looking after, which is always good. Look at the pretty pink of that. This is a Malva Moschata? No idea. It's beautiful. Look, we've got, I don't know what colour, whether I've got the right colours for that. And look at this little strange thing in the middle. How interesting. And we've got those to colour. It's like a little seed pod. Okay, we def this is a rose. I know that for sure. And it's very pretty. And we've got a lot of roses over here to colour. So you can just choose which ones we do. This one looks rather like this one. In fact, they all look like that one. Of course, you could uh, could do, do whatever colour you like. Now, these are crocuses. 
these look but these uh, I don't think they are there's it says crocus oliveri primus tenella galanthus navalis and onphalod verna so I don't know which that is all that is there are those little round flowers like those and there are these ones like these I don't know pretty though look at this one it's really interesting the paper's really dirty and it's Lilium Martogan so it's a type of lily obviously you can see that from looking at the picture we've got lots to do over here see it'd be interesting to think do I want to make my paper look aged in the same way as that I don't know and that looks like another lily. Yes, this is called a turban lily. I can see that. Look at that curve. How interesting. And you've got lots to do over here. And oh, I've seen these lilies. We used to have these in the house sometimes, cut flowers. And my mum always used to snip off those seed pods before they opened because that would really stain. It would stain the carpet or your clothes. It's okay if it stayed dry, you could vacuum it off or blow it, rub it off. But if you got it wet, it would never come out. I wonder if they use it as dye. I don't know. What do we have here? These look like... Those are atrovubans, but they look like anemones to me. But I don't know enough about flowers, but that's beautiful. Really, really beautiful. And we've got these ones to have a go at ourselves. They look more like this one. You could always do it that colour. So what have we got here? Uh, we've got that, which is here. And that, which is there. And that, which is there. We don't have any of those. But it tells us what they are. Covovilus tricolor. I wonder if it's that, because it's got three colours in it. Tropacula magus and Reseda odorata of course all these plants probably have common names as well which people are more used to knowing so we've got a rhododendron apparently i guess it's that of course and this is a cyclamen our picture i think we've only got rhododendrons in the picture oh well, we've got the cyclamen leaves ah they're down here at the bottom you can't see they're down here Oh, excuse me sniffing this one I don't know what that is but look at that it looks a bit like a carnation I don't know look at that and we've got a big one here to have a go at and there's some there it's sort of repeating um, symmetrical pattern and the, and the bird as well like that one. this one we've got this big flower here look to do we haven't got the little one I think I've got no idea what that is pretty we have some bright orange ones um, I can't think what those are called it says they are crocusmia crocusmia but they're not crocuses are they or monthritias star of the east Vesuvius and queen of Spain very pretty aren't they but uh, we've got some to have a go at on this page. Well, that looks like Blossom. Oh, it's Magnolia. Magnolia and Forsythia, of course. And I think we've just got Magnolia on this side to do. No, I'm wrong. It's the yellow one, the Forsythia, I think. Because Magnolia has a lot more petals. Well, that's pretty. I don't know what that is. It's called Lady Eve Price, Camosia Lithania. You can tell I studied Latin, can't you? Ooh. This is a peony. So that's very pretty. I love the sort of thin, wispy um, uh, leaves. Very pretty. And this one is a Dendrobium Throatsi. No idea. It looks a bit like a succulent because of the sort of woody stem. So that's really interesting. Well, this is a, um, looks like a sort of African violet type flower. I don't know. It's pretty, but we've got a whole sort of bunch of them here to do, which is pretty. 
This one is a crocus again. Um, it's a bluey, purpley one. I've got some purple ones. They're actually coming up already. Not the flowers, but the, the, the sort of leaves part. So what do we have here? That looks to me like, um, like fuchsias again. I don't know, because they're in bud. Not sure, we've got a lot of buds down here. You see the leaves are really pretty. And then a picture, we've got a lot of leaves. Look how pretty those are with all their reds. Be fun to have a go at that. Now this is two anemones, and we've got lots of space out here to have a go at practicing, having a go at those. These, I don't know what these are. Pretty though. And the pattern is quite similar over here to copy it across. And this is another anemone. They seem to have a lot, don't they? And we've got a sort of repeating pattern of some leaves and some flowers to do for that one. Aquilegia. I recognise that name as if it's a commonly used flower name, but I don't know if what they look like, so I don't know if that is what it is. We've got white again on that one, which is interesting. So that'll be tricky, I think. This is called the Guernsey Lily. It's very pretty. And we have, um, have it there to have a go at. And what's this? Retibida pinata. I don't know. I like this some very dark um, centre. It almost looks like an oxide daisy. It's not quite though. It's the wrong colour. And we have fuchsias here. Um, I don't know what those are. They look to me like dog roses. Don't know, but we've got both here. All you flower lovers will be going, ah, how do you not know what that is? <clears throat> Excuse me, so that's an iris and that's a snowdrop. <coughs> Excuse me. But this picture is quite interesting because it shows it wide open and here it's closed. So uh, it's quite, you'd have to make up that middle bit because you don't have a photo, but I think that's okay. And here we have another double spread. This is, I think, looks the same as the one on the front and that's the same as the inside of the front cover. And you could colour this in with pens if you wanted to. And there's the back, um, just showing you um, a little bit about it, saying it's got 45 illustrations um, and, uh, and pretty much the same info as was in the front. So there we go, there's the book. Um, I'm sure I will do a video from this with something just to sort of give you an idea of when you're copying how to get the colours similar if that's what you want to do obviously there's you don't have to do the same colours but just to show you what I would do to try and get the colours as similar as possible and that sort of thing I thought might be fun <coughs> excuse me I'm so sorry oh I've got a frog in my throat so I think I'd better go. But <laughs> thank you very much for watching and happy colouring.